whatever you need, light up your Christmas with Republic Bank and get a chance to win 825,000 in cash prizes. Plus, get a chance to give a family a Christmas hamper in your name. Log on to RepublicGuyana.com for more details. Let's light up Christmas. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. selected as one of the newsroom's phenomenal women of 2021. Tell us, how did it feel when you heard you had been selected? I actually f always feel a bit uh, uncertain about what, how to feel, you know, because I think what I do is uh, phenomenal, but maybe I'm not a phenomenal woman. And You're not a phenomenal I, woman. So what about the rest of us? <laughs> I, I, you know, everybody has their own so many things that people do that I couldn't possibly do. So right. I just think I feel grateful. Right. I think that might be the best word. So you studied at the University of Guyana, you studied at Harvard, you studied at the University of West Indies. So during your studies, what were some of the best and most fulfilling fundamental lessons that you learned while you were there? Well, each one of those was, just, you know, in a different country. I was at UWI in Trinidad uh, in the States for a short while at, in Massachusetts at Harvard and then at, at, U, at UG. At UG taught me, which was my first uh, brush with a higher education, UG taught me to appreciate and make everything uh, matter, every moment matter. And so UG was so uh, bereft of any, everything except for great people who taught me, you wow. know. So when I went away, uh, everything was just like a bonus, like icing on the cake. I was marveling at everything. But when I was in the States, one of the things that I really recognized, and this is a strange thing, was that I became very conscious of my accent. Oh, very, very early. Yeah, and uh, The Guyanese people, accent really yeah, stood and, out. And, you know, every time I, I opened my mouth, people would turn around in the class, right? And I never was conscious of this. And so for almost an entire semester, I wouldn't talk because, wow. yeah, because I was like, I didn't want everybody to be staring at me. And then at UE, UE I just had a lot of fun. Um, I was married <laughs> so you are in Trinidad? Yeah, I was in Trinidad. I was married to Trinidadian at the time. I had a home there and uh, it was just, just fun. Um, and of course, by that time, I'd kind of grown my intellectual wings a little bit. I was very happy to, uh, with the people I was with. I had a great cohort. I had a wonderful PhD supervisor. And, so I, I really, uh, I think I, I enjoyed uh, that very much. So out of the three, University of Guyana, Harvard, University of West Indies, UE, which one is, you know, which one is the closest to your heart? I, UG will always be the closest I to figured. my heart. Yeah. I had to uh, ask, I just had to make sure, but I figured. No, 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 UG is my home, UG is my love, you know, um, and uh, I, it's, UG gave me my start. And if most people in the world who would tell you um, they've gone on to do marvelous things and to excel, you know, they will tell you that UG gave them their start. So anytime I went away and came back, I'd spent 14 years out of Guyana, I would come back to UG and sometimes I would, I would cry because I was comparing what I saw elsewhere with what UG had, which was nothing, you know, and I, I think that but is... But UG is home. Yeah, but it was not only home, it was home in a way like I've I always felt like I was coming back to somewhere that was bombed or shell-shocked or something. Because you could, it was a shell, but the, the greatest asset was people, right? You've been producing creative work since you were 13 years old. Can you remember your first piece, or well, your piece yeah. at 13, and, and what it was about and, and yeah. why that stuck out? Because I read about you, your biography, and that I came across that and I thought that was fantastic. 13 years old, tell us about that. Well, I wrote my first play at 13, but I was writing long before that um, uh, because my mom was very interested in the arts and writing and I was surrounded in all my life with people who were in the arts, right? So um, at 13, I, of course, I remember the play. Of course you do. quite horrid. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that now, but I'm sure it yeah, was in not. In retrospect, you, you know, when you do something at 13, you think, oh, this is marvelous. Of course, you think and it's the best thing in the world. You know, and, and I have to thank all those people who would read my work and yes. say, oh, you know, it'd be very encouraging. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but, but it was a play called Bulege, and it was about, it was a, a one-act play. And oh, my friend, one act. Okay. Yeah, one were act. you the were you supposed to be the star of this? No, play? no, no, no. I oh. was I never wanted to be on stage. Oh, I was behind always, the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I was uh -huh. always kind of very shy um, growing up. Um, but my friend Malcolm De Freitas at the Theatre Guild, who's still my friend after all these years, uh, he 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 produced and directed the play. 
At and, 13. Uh, at 13, yeah, he produced it. He gave me a, he gave me a shot. So you've written books, poetry and plays. You've been the executive producer of over 30 films. Yeah. Uh, your creative works have been featured on the syllabi for both CAPE and CSEC. You've developed policy. So, and of course, the list goes on and on and on. And it's amazing to have read all of this about you. But from what I've just listed or what I have not listed, which one are you most proud of or can you even pick? I don't think of my work in terms of being proud, right? I think of my work in terms of what is most impactful and what, you know, when I see, uh, when I think about it or I see the work, it makes me smile or make me think, ah, you know, it was worth the effort, right? And so, um, the, my, my, my life, I like have two CVs, right? Fully developed CVs, which confuses people. So <laughs> I have this part of me, which is the CV that is the, the, the artistic part, which yes. I have very little training in. Which the creative in, part. The creative side. Yes. Which my mother actually made me, made me go and find a real, uh, a real job and, you know, a real, real training, which is why I went into psychology um, after. Um, and I shouldn't say this now because I don't want people to feel like you know, if their children are going into the arts, that it's not a real job. It is a real job. I think what uh, my work at, at the level of policy now, which is not really well known. I mean, um, a lot of the things that I do is really uh, backdoor diplomacy. A lot of, you know, uh, working uh, in writing papers or, 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 or kind of informing policy. But I think at the level of policy, um, I am able to see how not your, your, your work and your thinking not only impacts people like right now, but it really impacts the arc of development for a long time, right? Wow. The country for a long time. At the point at which we are right now as, as a human race, but also as a country, you really want to be able to kind of inflect what the decisions are that will be made from now on. And if those decisions are not correct and they're not based and premised on good research, good thinking, good intentions, then it's like a house of cards. You they're go put it's one gonna fall lock, apart. it's going to fall apart. And then so many people, an entire country, an entire region could get affected. So I think at this point in my life, I really am um, definitely into policy. But I love my work in the theater. Of you know, course, um, of course. <laughs> I, you started I, at 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, I really do love my work in the theater. I haven't been able to do a lot of it, but I, I still like my, my work with children in the theater, teaching children to write, um, working through problems, you know, that young people have using the arts and so on. So what is it about working with children that you love so much? I think it's my way of paying back to those people who invested in me. I was a beloved child, you know. Um, and a lot so, of, that's so well said. Yeah. I was, uh, a, a lot of people poured their love, their time, their energy, their talent into me. And, and if I am anything today, it's because of like a whole lot of people. You won the Ghana Prize on three occasions, 1998, 2000, and 2008. Which one meant the most to First you? First one. Oh, wow. First she knew sure. the question. She yeah. knew the question. <laughs> no, 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 no. That one, uh, that one is, uh, first of all, that's the play that is on all these syllabi. And that's a play that kind of was kind of setting a standard, a technical standard Amazing. worldwide Amazing. for uh, writing plays like that. So that's not only a, uh, a, an achievement because of how young I was at the time, but also because I had been, I had been, a, I had been uh, competing. You know, I had been submitting plays for years, and you finally and I wasn't got getting it. Through, and I was like, no, I'm done. After yes. this, if I don't get it, I'm done. And so it meant a lot. You know, uh, this play was 30 years old a couple of weeks ago, right? And I was invited to uh, speak about it at uh, in Trinidad. I did it online, of course, because I couldn't go. Right. Um, and they also are teaching it to the Creative Arts Center there. You must feel yeah. so proud. I, I am yeah. proud to know that a guy. This is happening yeah. to a fellow Guyanese woman. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It, it, that, that's that was. And they were saying like this. We we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of Duane, and I was like, what? 30th anniversary? <laughs> no, I'm not that old. Even. <laughs> but really, 30 years <laughs> flew by, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I was like, 30 years? Wow. You know, but really and truly, yeah, that, that was, that was the, I re, I, that's the play that, uh, that changed that everything changed, for you? Changed everything. The game changed. It kept me writing uh, because otherwise I was getting, just getting very despondent. We're in a transformational stage in our country's development. What do you believe the relevant stakeholders need to implement in order to continue fostering growth in culture and arts in our community here in Guyana? 
Well, you see, I, when people talk about culture, I think they talk about performance. And, I, and as a techni technician, I, I really need to make the difference. Okay. Uh, because culture is about everything we do. Of course it right? is, The way yes. we live, uh, how we act, our food, our music, our music, but also our medicine, mm -hmm. our, you know, how we are with health, right? Culture really is about who we are as a people, how we got to, to be doing that, and why we do that, right? So when we talk about culture, in that way, uh, we, you're talking about performance, uh, um, popular culture and performance and, and, and visual and performing arts and things like that. And I think that uh, what the mistake that we make in um, our societies is to believe that these things have no value and no purpose. I completely agree yeah. with and, you. And it's and an it's error. Sad. It's very sad. It's a huge error. It's an error. But yeah. I also, I think that uh, we have as artists and scholars and performers and to educate people right about what arts do so what would be your message if you had one key message to the relevant stakeholders watching this today in regards to culture and arts that we just discussed what would what would be that message i would say um, it needs to be addressed in the same way as science and technology um, it is the foundation uh, of of any society um, I love that. Foundation yeah. of any society. Yeah. And it is, a science and technology takes off from that, within that. You were named the first female vice chancellor of the University of Guyana in 2020. Tell us, how did you feel when you got this appointment? I don't know, to be quite I, honest. I, well, why it, didn't I, you know? Because it was, the country was in such a, you know, uh, a, a it was a tough year. A terrible year. shape. Yeah. And um, we were trying to, I was, you know, kind of chair of the transitional committee and we were, I was just completely focused on getting UG uh, back online, online, not back online, online so that our students, you know, 2,000 odd students would, would have something to look forward to, to work towards and so on. We were really concerned that they would have a mental health crisis if we were not able to keep them engaged. So it, I was, it was a very crazy time for me. My, my sister-in-law died at the same time like two days Sorry before my first it. interview and, and I had to take her children in, three little children. Um, so that was, uh, you know, I was very uh, uh, emotionally drained by that time, um, I think. And, and so, so how do you feel now about it, knowing that you are, in 2021, I, knowing that you are the first female vice, chan I, vice chancellor I, I of UG? Now I feel as if it's a privilege um, and it's a tremendous, uh, a tremendous, responsibility not only because they're they are little girls I know looking at me and other women That's so true and I also feel that it is my way of saying thank you to all those people who shaped my own life um, gave me things all kinds of things I wasn't you know from a wealthy family or anything like that so I think that I'm truly Guyana's child. I love um, that, Paloma. You know, Guyana's I child, that, I love that. that way, right? right. Um, because so many people put so much into me. And so to be in a position where I can, you know, help other people's children succeed in thousands, it's something that is, I, I take really seriously. What else does Dr. Paloma Mohammed Martin have in store for us? Because I feel like we could literally go anywhere from here. I feel so too. Uh, I, I, I really, I uh, don't know. I don't plan my life like that. I live by, by I, I'm led, right? I, I really feel that I, I work with spirit. I am given a task and if it feels right that I should do this, I do this. And if it doesn't, I just go and do something else. There's always something in my life that has to get done. You know, I could write, I could read, I could just take a, a break. Um, but I think the work of the university is not done. It's just beginning. Um, I really feel that uh, it needs to continue. I, if I am given an opportunity to do that, I will. If it's not to be done, it's not to be done. If it's not meant for you, it's not meant no. for you. Great message, Paloma. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to interview you. It's You're fantastic welcome. as I knew it would be. Thank right. you. That's it. Thank you. Christmas this year.
Whatever you need, light up your Christmas with Republic Bank and get a chance to win 825,000 in cash prizes. Plus get a chance to give a family a Christmas hamper in your name. Log on to republicguyana.com for more details. Let's light up Christmas. Republic Bank. We're the one for you.